Guten Morgen möchte ich allen ganz herzlich willkommen heißen zu diesem Gottesdienst und äh, wir freuen uns, dass wir diese Gelegenheit wieder haben, zusammenzukommen. Und äh, heute Morgen werdet ihr auch inne werden. Wir haben etliche, äh, ich könnte sagen, neue Gesichter unter uns, aber die werdet ihr nur später kennenlernen, wenn der Gottesdienst verläuft. Aber jetzt möchte ich euch nur ganz herzlich willkommen heißen hier unter uns und äh, die Gemeinschaft, die wir ja untereinander haben, soll ja ein Abspiegel sein von der Gemeinschaft, die wir mit unserem Herrn, mit Jesus Christus haben, nicht wahr? So in diesem Sinne kommen wir heute Morgen hier zusammen und äh, wir dürfen dieses erleben als ein Abspiegel von der Gemeinschaft, die wir haben mit unserem Herrn Jesus Christus. Wenn ihr an der Wand schaut, dann haben wir einen Vers, der wird uns so mehr oder weniger leiten heute Morgen. Wenn aber jener der Geist der Wahrheit kommen wird, wird er euch in alle Wahrheit leiten. Denn er wird nicht aus sich selber reden, sondern was er hören wird, das wird er reden. Und was zukünftig ist, wird er euch verkündigen. So, wir sind heute Morgen wieder zurück zu unserer Serie in der Apostelgeschichte. Und wir haben uns das Ziel gesetzt, wir wollen Gemeinde im Griff zu bekommen, nicht wahr? Das ist ja was, was uns treibt jetzt in dieser Serie. Dass wir erkennen und lernen und verstehen und dann ausleben können, was Gemeinde bedeutet. So, wir haben dann die Urgemeinde als unserem Vorbild. Und wir denken wirklich, dass das uns auch in dieser Zeit wirklich führen und leiten kann. So ganz herzlich willkommen hier. Bevor, bevor wir beten, möchte ich doch aber noch Gelegenheit geben, Gäste vorzustellen. So haben wir Gäste heute unter uns. Wir möchten euch ganz gerne besonders begrüßen. Bitte schön. Ja, ganz herzlich willkommen hier, Hildi. Und möge Gott dich segnen unter uns. Brasilien da, nicht? Aus Paraguay. Ganz herzlich willkommen hier. Schön, dass ihr da sein könnt. So, ich denke, ihr habt schon das, das Großkind gesehen, nicht wahr? Wir gratulieren auch dafür. Gott segne euch in unserer Mitte. Noch jemand? So muss es sein, ja? Immer, immer so ganz egal. Halb Brasilien, halb Paraguay. Und alle sind Deutschen, ja? So geht es. So, dieser Morgen soll auch ein froher Morgen sein, denn wir sind ja in der Gemeinschaft und in der Gegenwart Gottes. So, ganz herzlich willkommen in diesem Sinne. Wir wollen uns jetzt äh, erheben zum Gebet. Ich bitte, dass ihr stehen bleibt, bleibt für das erste Lied, wenn es möglich ist. Und dann, so wollen wir auch Gott loben und preisen. Lieber Vater, wir danken dir von ganzem Herzen, dass du gegenwärtig bist. Wir danken dir von ganzem Herzen, dass wir Gemeinschaft haben können. Wir danken von ganzem Herzen, Vater, dass du der bist, der eigentlich der Sinn dieser Zusammenkunft bist. Vater, wir danken dir auch von ganzem Herzen, dass wir dir loben und preisen dürfen. Vater, wir danken dir von ganzem Herzen, dass du unser Erlöser bist. Und Vater, da ist so vieles mehr, das in unserem Herzen ist, dessen wir voll sind, Herr, und dessen wir einfach heute Morgen erleben möchten. So bitten wir, sei du mit an jeden von uns. Du kennst unsere innerlichen Gefühle, Herr. Du kennst, was wir erlebt haben in der verflossenen Woche. Du kennst auch, was vor uns steht, Vater. Und wenn wir jetzt in der Mitte sind gerade, dann bitten wir, dass dieser Sonntag uns stärken möchte, Herr. Dass er uns aufmuntern möchte. Dass er uns trösten möchte. Vater, dass dieser Sonntag aber auch herausfordernd an uns wirken möchte, für was immer dein Wort uns sagen möchte, Herr, denn es ist dein Wort und so wollen wir es auch empfangen. Vater, wir öffnen unsere Herzen zu der Wirkung deines Geistes und dir sei die Ehre dafür. In Jesu Namen beten wir es. Amen. Ein frohen Lob 
zu dir ein Betungsfertiger, steig auf dein Mann.
Wir freuen uns heute Morgen, dass wir Brüder Heinrich Rempel unter uns haben. Die meisten von uns haben, äh, ihm noch nicht, haben noch nicht die Gelegenheit gehabt, ihn persönlich zu sehen und von ihm zu hören. So, äh, wir sind in Kontakt mit verschiedenen Missionen und ganz besonders mit MB Mission. Und äh, wir haben schon Johann Mathis unter uns gehabt, der ist schon ein bekanntes Gesicht unter uns. Und äh, heute möchten, möchte ich euch äh, Heinrich Rempel vorstellen. Bitte vom und er wird ein wenig berichten, gerade von der Arbeit, die getan wird. Und äh, Sie sind in engem Kontakt mit unserem Missionskomitee und äh, haben so manches schon äh, auch äh, als Partnerschaft äh, arbeiten dürfen. Wir freuen uns dazu und wir freuen uns, dass wir heute auch besser informiert werden und inspiriert für dieses. So Gott segne dich. Ich möchte alle ganz herzlich begrüßen, auch äh, aus unserer Gemeinde in Bielefeld in Deutschland, wo ich... Äh, schon seit ja, fast 40 Jahren, glaube ich, Mitglied bin, äh, wenn es so lange ist. Ähm, ja, ich ähm, bin Mitarbeiter der MB-Mission. Ähm, könnte man ein, das Bild einblenden? Ja, wohl. MB-Mission, und zwar äh, Europa. Wir arbeiten in Europa in äh, neun Ländern. Und Europa ist bei uns sehr groß bei der MB-Mission, weil es auch äh, Zentralasien und die Türkei mit einschließt was eigentlich nicht zu Europa gehört, aber das gehört, gehört in, unsere, ja, in unsere Verwaltung. In, äh, unser Büro ist ganz klein, Johann Mattis und ich und noch einige freiwillige Leute. Und ähm, ja, zunächst möchte ich ähm, also einmal ein großes Danke sagen, dass ihr, äh, also die King Road Church hier, also unsere Trecker aufgenommen habt. Und äh, in diesem Jahr, also das ist ja jedes Jahr, Viele geschickt, acht, äh, acht Personen aus Deutschland und zwei sind aus Frankreich. Besonders ist, äh, meine Tochter ist auch unter Ihnen äh, und äh, ich möchte also ganz herzlichen Dank sagen, dass ihr sie beherbergt habt, in Familien aufgenommen und ihnen so den Einstieg hier in Kanada äh, wirklich äh, sehr freudig und äh, leicht gemacht habt. Ähm, dann möchte ich noch ein herzliches Danke sagen für die Unterstützung äh, unseres Programms in der Ukraine. Ähm, und zwar äh, das Programm Dream, Kid, Dream Kids. Ähm, da werden also Familien, die äh, sehr benachteiligt sind, teilweise zerrissene Familien, äh, teilweise heruntergekommene Familien, äh, mit ihnen werden Freizeiten gemacht und so äh, werden sie angezogen in die Gemeinschaft der Gläubigen äh, und ihnen wird geholfen. Und äh, ihr, eure Gemeinde hat dazu beigesteuert, dass wir viel mehr Familien auch schicken konnten. Vielen, vielen Dank auch für die Spenden, die wir bekommen haben. Ich möchte heute also, äh, also äh, ganz kurz euch mit reinnehmen in, in zwei ähm, äh, Länder, die uns jetzt ganz besonders am Herzen liegen, ähm, und zwar einmal Türkei. In der Türkei erleben wir jetzt zum einen also große Schwierigkeiten. Wir haben einige nordamerikanische Missionare, die konnten nicht mehr ein, also im Land bleiben. Sie haben kein Visum bekommen. Zwei Familien mussten aus dem Land rausfahren und werden jetzt in Österreich leben. Und von dort aus werden sie besuchsweise in der Türkei tätig sein. Aber ja, wir haben zum anderen auch eine große, man kann sagen, Erweckung, wenn man das so in, in, aus türkischer Perspektive sieht. Äh, wir haben also äh, eine wachsende Gemeinde in Istanbul und in der Umgebung. Ein äh, Mitarbeiter von der RB-Mission Hakan, äh, der ist jetzt auch gerade hier. Äh, wir hatten so ein Treffen hier gehabt mit allen so verantwortlichen Personen äh, bei der RB-Mission. Wir sehen jetzt Bruder Hakan hier bei der Taufe. Vor, vor zwei Wochen war diese Taufe, 14 Personen wurden äh, getauft und das war eine ganz besondere Freude. Eine neue Gemeinde ist ähm, entstanden, ähm, Ausländer mussten alle weg, eine Familie ist durch eine Krebserkrankung, musste auch äh, abreisen ähm, und das sah so düster aus, aber mitten unter ihnen äh, ist, ist, eine neue, also ist eine neue Gemeinde entstanden in Istanbul. Und das ist, sind so die Personen, die zu dieser Gemeinde äh, kommen. 
äh, ist, die ist erst seit einigen Monaten da. Äh, hier auf, dem, auf der Taufe sind natürlich mehr Personen da als sonst. Aber ähm, Hakan äh, schreibt uns immer wieder, dass Leute zum Glauben kommen. Und diese Familie hat er, also über diese Familie hat er geschrieben, vor, jetzt wirklich vor einer Woche, gesagt, betet für diese Familie. Jetzt haben sie Jesus kennengelernt. Heute Morgen habe ich noch eine E-Mail. Mann ist zum Glauben gekommen. Das ist eine große Freude. Ich möchte euch einfach bitten, dass ihr für die Türkei betet. Wir haben Herausforderungen dort aber auch große Freude. Und wir möchten äh, wirklich sehen, dass der Herr seine Gemeinde dort baut. Äh, das Zweite, äh, wo ich so einen kleinen Einblick äh, geben möchte, ist äh, Kirgistan und Tadschikistan äh, Ländern. Äh, in Kirgistan haben wir äh, auch einen ein kirgisischen Mitarbeiter, Timur Lan, der hier äh, ganz links auf dem Bild steht äh, und es wachsen auch die Gemeinde wächst auch dort und ist, dass die Gemeinde aus Kirgistan, die schon etwas stabiler ist, dass sie Missionare entsendet, wo es fast keine Gläubigen gibt und und zwar im Pamirgebirge, sehr hoch in den Bergen, über 5000 Meter über Meeresspiegel auf dem Hochplateau in Pamir. Da sind uns fast, also eigentlich gar keine Gläubigen bekannt. Die Gemeinde in Kirgisistan erlebt auch viele Schwierigkeiten. Vor einigen Wochen gab es einen Überfall auf die Gemeinde zum Beispiel und die Wände wurden, wurden vollgesprüht mit hässlichen Worten zum Beispiel. Wir werden euch töten, lehrt unsere Kinder nicht. Und die meisten Gläubigen sind junge Leute, die natürlich auch erschrocken waren dadurch, aber hier sehen wir eine Gebetsversammlung, kurz danach. Sie haben sich versammelt, um zu beten, dass der Herr ihnen Kraft gibt, mitten unter diesen, in diesen Schwierigkeiten. Und ähm, es ist ein, eine Freude zu sehen, dass diese junge Gemeinde aus Kirgisistan ähm, in diesem Jahr vier Missionare entsendet nach Tadschikistan. Und dort werden sie ein Jahr sich einsetzen. Und äh, wir hoffen, dass sie dort in den Schulen also Sportunterricht machen und so Kontakte knüpfen und dort etwas entsteht zu Ehre Gottes. Auch hier möchte ich einfach einladen für euch, betet mit. Ich bin nach dem Gottesdienst auch bereit, mehr Informationen dazu zu geben. Wenn jemand für uns als Familie beten möchte, kann gerne auch ein Gebetskärtchen erhalten. Ich freue mich, dass ich jetzt zu euch kurz sprechen konnte. Ja, vielen Dank für alles, was mitgeteilt wurde. So, heute haben wir ein Gesicht ja, für, für, für Heinrich Rempel und das ist äh, gut für uns. Dann können wir auch gezielter beten für dich und auch für die Arbeit und das möchten wir auch weiterhin tun. So, es ist gut, wenn wir äh, durch unsere Missionstätigkeit ja, Menschen erreichen, die wir persönlich gar nicht kennen. Und das ist ja der Sinn der Mission, sodass wir irgendwie Handlanger sein können, um das Wort Jesu Christi weiterzugeben. Ich möchte jetzt bitten, dass ihr das Bulletin zur Hand nimmt und äh, wir haben etliche ganz wichtige Bekanntgaben, die wir heute mitteilen möchte und äh, die ihr zu Herzen nehmen sollt. Einmal, wir laden ganz herzlich ein für eine ganz wichtige Gemeindestunde morgen abends um 7.30 Uhr, halb acht. So, wir haben unsere Gemeindestunde vorverschoben da wir etliche wichtige Mitteilungen haben, die wir äh, machen wollen, ähm, jedenfalls äh, über Personal und äh, auch der Pastorenarbeit in der Zukunft. So, morgen Abend um halb acht, bitte, erscheint hier voll, vollzählig. Dann äh, möchten wir gratulieren. Ich weiß gar nicht, wie das so geschieht. Äh, ich weiß gar nicht, ob das in, in, in den letzten Jahren schon mal so gewesen ist in unserer Gemeinde. Aber habt ihr Bekanntgabe Nummer zwei schon mal gelesen? Drei Verlobungen auf einmal, das gibt es ja gar nicht, ne? So, zuerst gratulieren wir Sophie Schmidt, die Tochter von Elmer und Cornelia. So, Elmer ist hier, Cornelia ist auf Mission. So, wir gratulieren ganz herzlich zu der Verlobung von Sophie mit äh, Nick Heil. 
und äh, möchten auch Ihnen Gottes Segen wünschen für die nächsten Zeiten und der Vorbereitung für die Hochzeit. Dann äh, nächstens Gerald Becker, äh, Sohn von Harry und Susanna Becker und äh, mit äh, Emily Wegner. Und auch für Ihnen möchten wir ganz äh, herzlich Glück, Glückwünsche wünschen und äh, Gottes Segen für diese neue Zeit. Und dann auch noch für Carissa Wins, äh, Tochter von Arvid und äh, Karin Wins und die Großeltern sind auch hier mit Christopher Schmidt. So, ja, drei Verlobungen, drei neue Gebetsanliegen für uns und es soll eine freudenfrohe Zeit sein für diese Familien. So möge Gott euch segnen in der Vorbereitung, wie ich gesagt habe. Dann möchten wir auch danken für die viele Arbeit, die getan wird in unserer Gemeinde und so manches war am Geschehen. So, wir Danke einfach mal für all diejenigen, die auch für unsere Kranken beten. Zur Schwester Katie hat ein Dank eingestellt, aber auch für die vielen anderen, die beten und mithelfen für unsere Kranken und Bedürftigen in unserer Gemeinde. So vielen Dank, wenn ihr mithilft und mitbetet. Dann auch für unser Golftournament, das am vorigen Wochenende stattfinden dürfen, für Bernhard Anna Dick und Elmer und Nathalie Wiebe. Und auch für das ganze Team, das... Freitag und Samstag bei dem MCC-Festival äh, mitgearbeitet. 10.000 Porzelches gebacken, gebraten und verkauft. Das ist eine Menge auf Fett, denke ich. Ja? Das, ist, das dient aber zum Guten. Sie sagen, das gibt guter Fett und der schlechte Fett. MCC-Fett ist immer gut. So. Macht es weiter. Also vielen Dank für all diejenigen, die, die mitgearbeitet haben und mitgegessen haben. Ja, das ist ja wichtig, dass wir es tun. Sammy Unger, wir, haben sie schon, äh, wir werden sie auch morgen Abend noch ein bisschen besser vorstellen, die im Büro arbeiten wird, so bitte kommt morgen auch für das. Dann äh, haben wir auch noch Not für diejenigen, die in unserem technischen Abteil mitarbeiten möchten. Wir brauchen noch, wenn ihr Lust habt, das zu tun, bitte kommt. So ihr werdet angelehrt äh, werden, wie das zu tun. So bitte spricht mit Ricky Lohan darüber. Und auch We College äh, braucht noch etliche Mithilfe. Ich denke zwei. So bitte spricht mit Janet Jans äh, darüber. Die kann euch dann auch mehr Auskunft geben darüber. So und noch eines MCC, BC, AGM. Die, Konfer äh, die Jahrestagesstunde findet am 30. September statt. So wenn du als Delegierter sein möchtest, bitte schreib dich hinten im Infocenter ein. So wie ich euch gesagt habe, etliche, eine ganze Reihe wichtige Sachen sind, die wir bekannt geben und wir möchten euch auch bitten, dass ihr für all dieses betet und mitmacht, soweit ihr könnt. Dann möchten wir uns auch ganz besonders im Gebet hinter Familien stellen und das erste Gebetsanliegen ist für die Penner-Familie. Schwester Eva Penner ist Samstag gestern heimgegangen, gestorben. Und so möchten wir unser Beileid der ganzen Familie wünschen, ähm, die Kinder Laura und Brian Goddard und Art und Inge Penner und Adeline und Irvings äh, und auch die Großkinder sicherlich. So unser Beileid für Ihnen und wir wünschen Ihnen auch Gottes Trost. So die äh, äh, Trauerfeier, die Beerdigung soll am Donnerstag stattfinden. So das ist noch nicht ganz fest. Das muss noch bestätigt werden morgen, weil es ja über das Wochenende geschehen ist. Aber die Planung ist wie folgend. Die Besichtigung, die Viewing wird am Mittwoch um 7.30 Uhr bis 8 Uhr stattfinden, hier in der King Road Gemeinde. Und dann die Beerdigung im McClure Road Cemetery am Donnerstag morgens um 9.30 Uhr, so halb zehn morgen. Und dann die Gedenkfeier, der Memorial Service, ist dann am Donnerstag hier um 11 Uhr morgens. Und danach dann, äh, für andere Informationen, bitte ruft nur unser Büro an. Die werden euch auch Auskunft geben. So, unsere haben noch eine ganze Reihe andere äh, Notbedürftigen und auch ganz besonders äh, Personen, die äh, Heilung brauchen. Sie habt, all die Namen habt ihr in unser Bulletin, sowie auch unsere Missionare, für denen wir beten in dieser Woche. So bitte äh, schaut euch das nach. So, weil wir die Beerdigung am Donnerstag haben, werden wir keine Bibelstunde am Mittwoch haben. So die Bibelstunde am Mittwoch morgens fällt diese Woche aus. Und wenn ihr weiter in dieser Woche schaut, in dem Insert, da habt ihr all die Programme auch für 
Kinder und Großkinder, so bitte, es ist so manches, was da geschieht und auch zwei andere Inserts noch, die ihr habt, bitte liest es euch durch, sehr viele gute, wichtige Informationen. So wie ihr merkt es schon, dass wir als Gemeinde viel Grund zum Beten haben, wir haben viel Grund zum Danken, wir haben auch viel Grund, dass wir uns in Liebe untereinander ermuntern und das möchten wir auch weiter tun. Wir danken euch auch ganz herzlich für all die finanzielle Unterstützung für unsere Gemeinde und wir möchten euch weiterhin auch Mut machen, das weiterhin so zu tun, dass wir auch unser Budget weiterhin ausführen können, so wie es geplant ist. Wir sind froh, dass soweit, denke ich, wir auf einem guten Stand sind. Und daraufhin wollen wir auch heute Morgen das Opfer heben. Bitte, dass die Platzanweiser nach vorne kommen. Wir wollen für die verschiedenen Gebetsanliegen beten, aber auch für das Opfer, das wir heben werden. Wir verneigen unser Haupt dazu. Vater, so manches geschieht in unserem Leben und so manches im Leben unserer Gemeinde, Herr. Und wir danken, dass du das Ziel bist, warum wir hier sind, wozu wir hier sind, Herr. Und hilf uns, dass wir daraufhin ganz gezielt wirklich leben, Herr, dass wir unsere Prioritäten daraufhin einsetzen. Und wir bitten, Herr, dass du weiterhin mit uns sein möchtest, die Leitung unserer Gemeinde und jedes Abteil unserer Gemeinde, wenn wir wieder aufs Neue so viele Programme beginnen in dieser Zeit. Vater, schenke du deinem Segen, dass es nicht nur ein Programm sein möchte, aber dass es eine Lebensveränderung durch dein Wort geschehen möchte, Herr. Vater, du hast so manches schon gehört, was wir erwähnt haben. Du kennst es alles, Vater, und wir bringen unsere Kranken vor dir, Herr. Wir danken, dass wir für sie beten dürfen und heute Morgen ganz besonders für Schwester Lena Hildebrand und Schwester Agathe Thiessen. Möchtest du ihnen besonders nahe sein, Herr, und die Heilung schenken, die sie brauchen. Vater, wir beten auch für die Penner-Familie, dass du sie trösten möchtest, Herr, und ganz besonders nahe sein in den nächsten Tagen, Herr, wenn sie die Beerdigung planen. Vater, wir beten auch für die Flüchtlingsfamilie, Herr, möchtest du Gnade schenken, doch, Vater, dass sie die Genehmigung bekommen können. Wir bitten für ihnen, dass du sie auch in dieser Zwischenzeit immer erneut Mut geben möchtest, Herr. Dann bitten wir für Stefan und Letitia, für Ruben und Selina, für die Arbeit in verschiedenen Ländern, die unter Verfolgung sind, Vater. Wir beten für Tina Giesbrecht, Gredel Ganz, für Cornelia Schmidt, für Eleanor und Ernst Thielmann, die in der mexiko kampagne sind, dass du ihnen ganz besonders von oben ausrüsten möchtest, Herr, dass du ihnen schützen möchtest vom Bösen und die Freiheit schenken, dein Wort weiterzugeben, Herr. Vater, wir sind so dankbar für alles, was du uns gibst und schenkst, Herr. Und wir bitten auch für morgen, für unsere Gemeindestunde, dass du uns einen Segen schenken möchtest in all dem, was wir auch dort und erleben werden, Herr. Herr, und jetzt beten wir besonders für dieses Opfer. Möchtest du es vervielfältigen, Vater? Wir möchten es mit Freude geben, Herr, zu deinem Reich. Segen uns auch weiterhin, Vater, wenn wir dich loben und wenn wir dein Wort hören werden diesen Morgen. In Jesu Namen beten wir es. Amen.
Heute Morgen haben wir einen ganz besonderen Gast und ich freue mich, dass wir heute Morgen Rob Thiessen unter uns haben. Rob Thiessen ist der Conference Minister von unserer BC-Konferenz. Und äh, er hat die Arbeit und die Verantwortung, mehr als 100 Gemeinden zu betreuen. Und äh, ich denke schon, eine ist ja oft schon ein bisschen zu viel, ja? Aber wir, ich möchte ganz besonders, ich, ich sage, ich freue mich, dass er unter uns ist und dass ihr ihn wieder sehen könnt, sodass ihr auch für ihn beten könnt. Und äh, das möchten wir auch heute Morgen tun. Er wird uns heute Morgen die Botschaft bringen. Er wird ein bisschen mehr auch für, über, über sich persönlich sagen. Aber wir möchten auch ganz besonders für ihn, für die Arbeit in der Konferenz auch zu beten. Und ich habe Eich Bögen ge, gefragt, dass er das tun möchte. Also bitte, Rob, komm und... Äh, wir möchten für dich vorher beten. Die Zeit. God, this morning I thank you for the gifts you give to the church. I thank you for the gifts of leadership. This morning I thank you especially for our brother Rob Thiessen. And God, as he leads our conference, as he invests his time and talents and gifts for you and for your glory and for your kingdom, bless him, God. Give him wisdom. Give him wisdom to know the boundaries in his life of time and of commitment. May we submit to his leadership as unto, as unto the Lord. So bless our brother God as he leads us and may our conference ministry in the word bless it to our hearts and minds and lives this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, there's two English sprechen, ich Deutsch. Ich denke, das wird nicht schaffen. Ich, äh, ich habe nur ein klein bisschen Deutsch, aber äh, dies wird schwer sein, weil ich habe äh, genug Deutsch, dass ich werd Heinz führen und denken, was er sagt. Und dann muss ich auch denken, was ich will sagen. Wenn das äh, Chinese oder <lacht> Arabic ist, ist das... Äh, Leichter, wenn ich kann nicht verstehen, aber I will try. Rob sagte mir schon heute Morgen, dass was bedeutet Kriegen, meint das ein Krieg für mich? Ich sage, <lacht> no, no, das möchten wir nicht tun. Yeah. So, it's good to be with you. Es ist gut, dass ich mit euch sein kann. And I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters in the Mennonite Brethren Conference across British Columbia. Und ich möchte euch grüßen von der ganzen Konferenz hier in British Columbia. When I hear it introduced that I'm responsible for 100 churches, uh, I, I get worried. When I, when I hear that I'm über 100, verantwortlich bin über 100 Gemeinden, dann dann bin ich besorgt, sagt. But it is the Lord's church, and our responsibility day by day is Aber to listen Gottes and obey. Aber es ist Gottes Gemeinde, und es ist unsere Aufgabe dann, die wir täglich ausführen. Now speaking, I I I have. I want to stay on the right path. Wenn ich zu einer deutschen Gemeinde spreche, dann möchte ich auf dem richtigen Weg bleiben. I heard a, a Swedish speaker this summer who was speaking on creativity. Und ich habe einen schwedischen äh, ähm, Sprecher oder äh, ja gehört und äh, oh, what, what is, speaking on creativity. Er hat an äh, Kreativität gesprochen. He related a story of his brother who was visiting in Germany on holidays. Und er hat äh, mir erzählt von äh, einer Geschichte von seinem Bruder der auf uh, uh, Holidays war. At the hotel, there was an indoor swimming pool. Und in einem Hotel, da war ein uh, uh, Schwimmbaden. And uh, his brother decided to go swimming in the pool. There und was der, only one man sitting. Und er wollte dann uh, schwimmen gehen, und da war aber nur noch eine Person, die an der Seite saß und zuschaute. The lines in the pool were going this way, the long way, but the, the man decided to swim the short way across. So die Linie, die war diesen Weg, aber dieser Mann, der schwimmte, der, der wollte so quer über schwimmen. After a while, the man got up from the side. Und nach einer kleinen Weile, dann ging der, stand der Mann auf, der an der Seite war. And he waved him down and he said, now why are you swimming this way? Und er sagte zu ihm, warum schwimmst du diesen Weg? Well, he said, it's, uh, I didn't want to go the long way. Yeah, but he said, the lines are going this way. Er sagte, ich will nicht den langen Weg gehen, aber die Linie, die geht ja doch diesen Weg. Well, the Swedish man said, but there's no one in the pool. I'm not bothering anyone. Aber er sagte, da ist ja niemand nicht hier im Schwimmbaden, so ich bin doch keinen Anstoß an jemanden. And the German said, well, you're bothering me. Aber der deutsche Mann sagte, aber du bist mir ein Anstoß. Yeah. 
So the Swedish man decided the longest way of the pool was from corner to corner. So then the Swedish man thought, yeah, the longest way, but it's going from one ecke to another ecke. So just to bother the German, he swam corner to corner. And um, him further, then, then, to stay, he said, he had to swim from one ecke to another ecke. I think the poor German man just got up and left. I think the German man just went out of the pool. So I will try to swim in the lines this morning. I will try to swim in the lines this morning. Heute Morgen. Although our text in Scripture today is going to take us uh, in unusual directions, challenge our thinking if we're thinking just in the lines. Aber unser Text wird heute Morgen uns wahrscheinlich ein bisschen an eine andere uh, uh, Richtung bringen, so dass wir nicht nur an der Linie schwimmen. Mm -hmm. Maybe before I jump into the text, I just Want to remind you that we as churches, what we as churches do together in the. Vielleicht nur bevor wir weiter ins im Text hineingehen, möchte ich nur noch ein bisschen uns daran erinnern, was wir als Gemeinden zusammen tun. Of course, we already heard a little bit about MB Mission, and we're involved in a church with a wider conference nationally and internationally. Wir haben schon von MB Mission heute Morgen gehört, und wir sind beteiligt an der ganzen nationalen. MB Gemeinde und auch international. And then of course in the province we have our camps, we have our college and we have church planting. Und in unserer Provinz haben wir die Camps, die wir haben, wir haben unsere Bibelschule und auch die verschiedenen neue Gemeinden, die wir pflanzen. Yeah, we have five established camps and of course you have a, a special camp running here from this church as do other churches. Wir haben fünf Camps, die wir haben in BC und uh, King Road Gemeinde hat ja auch noch den Track Camp. Mm -hmm. uh, Every year we see about 2000 young people make decisions for Christ at our camps. Wir haben ungefähr 2000 äh, äh, Personen oder Kinder, die in den Camps Jesus Christus annehmen jedes Jahr. Mm -hmm. And uh, our college this year is overflowing. Und unser College dieses Jahr ist ganz voll. Yeah, we uh, we're so excited about the number of students who want to come and study the Word of God. Wir sind sehr froh über all die Studenten, die Conference work that the camps. So das Geld, das wir zu der Konferenz geben, das wird dann verteilt unter die Camps, unter die Bibelschule und auch verschiedene andere Arbeiten, die getan werden. And in addition, Dennis and I work to help churches uh, going through transitions. Und Dennis und ich, wir helfen dann auch Gemeinden, besonders diejenigen, die in einer Übergangsphase sind. We help them with their insurances and other legal issues that they may face. Wir helfen ihnen auch mit die legalen Situationen, wie zum Beispiel Versicherung und so weiter. And then most importantly, we want to encourage churches to be faithful to the gospel and living on mission. Und wir wollen ganz wichtig, das ganz Wichtigste, was wir tun wollen, ist, dass die Gemeinden treu sein sollen. Die, das Evangelium auszuleben und die Mission auszuführen. So, on that theme, let's look in the book of Acts, chapter 8. Und heute Morgen wollen wir in Apostelgeschichte 8 reinschauen. In the book of Acts, we have a pattern for the church. In der Apostelgeschichte haben wir ein Schema für die Gemeinde. We see the centrality of the good news of Jesus Christ spreading. Wir sehen, dass Jesus Christus am Zentrum ist und das dann aus durch ihm und aus ihm es verbreitet wird. And we see the power of the Holy Spirit guiding that work. Und wir sehen die Kraft des Heiligen Geistes, das Wort, äh, dass es das Wort eigentlich weiterführt. The pattern is set in Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2. Das Schema ist in Kapitel 1 und 2 in chapter, festgesetzt. In chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus says the gospel will go from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the ends of the earth. In uh, Apostelgeschichte 1, Vers 8 sagt, es wird von Jerusalem, Judea und bis ans Ende der Erde geschickt werden, das Evangelium. And in Acts chapter 2, the power comes that transforms these dis praying disciples into missionaries. Und in Apostelgeschichte Kapitel 2 kommt uh, die Kraft, wo der Heilige Geist diese Apostel ausschickt als die Missionare. This morning I want to just draw four points from Acts chapter 8 verse 26 to the end of the chapter verse 40. Heute morgen möchte ich vier Punkte betonen in Apostelgeschichte 8 Verse 26 bis 40. We're going to look at how God is able to guide us and others by his spirit. Wir werden daraufhin äh, beachten, wie Gott äh, es ermöglicht uns zu leiten durch seinen Geist. How God sees and loves hitchhikers. Wie Gott äh, sie, die Mitfahrer, Hitchhiker wissen, ja, die Mitfahrer, die mit dem Daumen fahren, äh, wie Gott sie liebt. And how the message of the gospel transforms lives. Und wie die äh, Botschaft 
des Evangeliums Leben verändert. And finally, how simple obedience to Christ can have a world-changing impact. Und wie denn die Treue Gott zu gehorchen ein uh, wirklich ein Einschlag in der Welt hat. So first of all, how God is able to guide us. Wie kann Gott uns leiten? Das ist der erste Punkt. Verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Aber ein Engel des Herrn sagte zu Philippus, steh auf und geh nach Süden auf die Straße, die von Jerusalem nach Gaza hinabführt, die öde ist. Da stand er auf und ging hin. Und sie, ein Mann aus Äthiopien, ein Kämmerer und Mächtiger der Kandake, der Königin der Äthiopier, der für alle Finanzen verantwortlich war, der war nach Jerusalem gekommen, um anzubeten. Und nun reiste er wieder heim und saß auf seinen Wagen und las den Propheten Jesaja. Und der Geist aber sagte zu Philippus, geh hin und halte dich zu diesen Wagen. The first way that I want to, us to understand how God guides is actually at the beginning of this chapter. Das, den ersten Weg, wie Gott uns führt, möchte ich betonen, befinden wir am Anfang dieses Kapitels. In Chapter 8, we see a change in the book of Acts and a great persecution broke out against the church. Im, im, im Kapitel 8 da sehen wir, dass eine große Verfolgung der Gemeinde eintraf. And everyone was scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Und sie wurden verstreut in Judäa und Samaria. So God uses circumstances to really change the, the mission of the church. Gott braucht Gegenstände, Umstände, um die uh, Gemeinde zu verändern. So it's amazing and wonderful that the sovereign God is even in control of such a thing as persecution. Es ist wunderbar zu sehen, dass unser souveräner Gott wirklich auch in den Umständen und auch Verfolgung die Kontrolle hat. And we know this has happened repeatedly in history. Und das ist immer wieder in der Geschichte geschehen. This brother that uh, uh, Brother Heinrich was telling us about uh, Hakan, he is in Turkey and in the Muslim countries we are seeing a tremendous change in mission. Heute haben wir gehört von uh, Hakan, der in uh, dem muslimischen uh, Land in der Türkei ist und wir hören heute von großen Änderungen in der Türkei. When I met some young Muslims in, uh, in Tunisia who had come to Christ, I said, how did that happen? Als ich in Tunisien uh, junge Christen, die uh, eigentlich junge Menschen... Said, when 9-11 happened, they knew... This is my religion and I need to find a new one. Aber ich muss einen neuen Gott. Many Muslims. Geschehnisse in dieser Welt, in unserer Geschichte, sogar wie 9-11, die ändern die Herzen der Menschen. We see ISIS and what they're doing. Wir sehen ISIS und was es macht. But God is stirring the hearts of regular Muslim people to say, where is peace? Aber Gott wirkt in den Herzen dieser Muslime und er... Hat diese, stellt diese Frage in ihrem Herzen, wo ist Frieden? And Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is revealing himself. Und Jesus, der Prinz des Friedens, er entfaltet und er bekennt sich. Our Mennonite church, uh, Mennonite brethren family experienced the same thing. Wir als Mütenbrüdergemeinde, wir erfahren dasselbe. God led us through circumstances to South America, to United States, and uh, here to Canada. God hat durch verschiedene Umstände uns zu Südamerika, zu Nordamerika und hier zu Kanada geschickt. So, brothers and sisters, when world events happen, we don't just look at it as war or terrible things. We wonder, what is God doing? Wenn etwas geschieht in der Geschichte, dann uh, schauen wir zu es nicht nur als ein uh, Krieg oder irgendetwas, was geschieht, aber was ist was Gott durch dieses macht. We look for opportunities. Wir, le- äh, wir suchen Gelegenheiten. And so the- In Jerusalem sie wurde aufgerührt und sie ging aus, um das Wort zu verbreiten. God also speaks to us personally, and that's what we see in Philip's life. Aber Gott, der spricht auch zu uns ganz persönlich, und das sehen wir gerade im Leben des Philippus. We see an angel spoke to Philip. Wir sehen, dass ein Engel zu Philip sprach. An angel is a messenger from God. Ein Engel, der ist ein... Äh, 
Botschafter Gottes. I wish there was more details. Was this a flaming angel with a sword? Ich dachte, ich möchte gerne haben mehr mehr Einzelheiten haben. Wie was was für ein Engel war das? Hatte er einen großen flammenden Schwert in seiner Hand? Was it a dream or a vision like happened to Peter? Hatte er einen Traum oder eine Vision, so wie Petrus es erfuhr? I don't know. Ich weiß es nicht. And uh, sometimes uh, the book of Acts doesn't give us all the details. Manchmal gibt uns Apostelgeschichte nicht die Einzelheiten. There are many ways throughout this book of Acts that the Holy Spirit guides people personally. Es sind viele Wege, wie der Heilige Geist Menschen leitet ganz persönlich. The Apostle Paul talks about wanting to cross borders to visit a region but was stopped by the spirit of Jesus. Paulus der spricht davon dass er in anderen Landschaften hineingehen wollte, aber er wurde einfach äh, gestoppt, dass er es nicht weitergehen, dass er nicht weitergehen konnte. We don't know how that happened, but clearly believers in God have access communication from the spirit of God that's personal. Aber wir wissen nicht genau, wie es geschehen war damals, aber Ganz klar sehen wir es, dass sie diese Verbindung haben, die ganz persönlich ist, die ihnen das sagt. That same Holy Spirit lives in you and me, brothers and sisters. Derselbe Heilige Geist, der lebt in dir und auch in mir. You say, well, God doesn't speak to me. Aber du sagst vielleicht, Gott spricht nicht zu mir. Or he just speaks to me through the Bible. Aber er oder er spricht vielleicht nur durch die Bibel zu mir. God does speak to us through the Bible. Gott spricht zu uns durch die Bibel. But the Holy Spirit is the one, just like our verse says, that brings that word to life. Aber das ist der Heilige Geist, der dieses Wort lebendig macht. And the Holy Spirit also can guide us moment by moment. Und der Heilige Geist kann es von Moment zu Moment leiten. Many of you have experienced this in your life. Viele von euch haben das erlebt in eurem Leben. You've had a nudge or an inkling. I should go here. I should do this. Ja, und ihr erkennt das. Ich sollte dieses oder jenes machen. Or maybe the Holy Spirit has said, No, 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 no. Don't, don't do that. Oder vielleicht hat der Heilige Geist gesagt, No, 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 no. Das, das sollst du nicht tun. Sometimes the Holy Spirit says, No, no, no. Don't say that. You need und to be quiert. Manchmal sagt der Heilige Geist, No, no. Das sollst du nicht sagen. Du sollst How many have felt that sometimes? Wie viele von euch habt das yeah. schon erlebt? And then how many made the mistake and said it anyway? Und wie viele yeah. von euch okay. habt es dennoch gesagt und getan? Yeah. We want to cultivate that listening. Wir wollen das äh, weiter aufarbeiten, ganz besonders zu hören. Maybe we should ask the Lord. Lord, give me dreams. Wir, vielleicht sollten wir Gott fragen danach. Gib mir verschiedene Träume. Speak to me. Sprich zu mir. Guide me. Leite mich. Guide me today. Leite mich heute. Today in my classes. Guide me who I should speak to. Heute in der Schule. Ja, hilf mich, leite mich, zu wem ich reden soll. Lord, with my neighbors, give me an opening. Ja, auch für meine Nachbarn. Gib mir eine Gelegenheit. That leads us to the second point. God sees and loves hitchhikers. Das bringt uns zum zweiten Punkt. Gott sieht und er liebt Mitfahrer. So. This eunuch is not really a hitchhiker. Dieser uh, Kämmerer ist wirklich nicht ein Mitfahrer. I just made that up. It's a ich habe das einfach ausgefunden. <laughs> Actually, Philip is more like the hitchhiker. Ich denke, dass Philippus vielleicht mehr der Mitfahrer war. He's the one on foot. Hier ist der, der and uh, the, uh, wanderte. Yeah, and the Ethiopian, he has a chariot. Und der Äthiopien, der hat ja den Wagen. You had to have Uh, you had to be very wealthy in those days to have a chariot. Musst du schon sehr reich sein, dass du einen Wagen besitzen konntest in der damaligen Zeit. But we can't miss this strange event that Philip, a Jew, is talking to a black African. Wir können es aber nicht äh, vermissen, dass in dieser Situation jetzt Philip zu einem schwarzen Afrikaner spricht. And we know that uh, e Ethiopia has an interesting history in the Bible. Und Ethiopien hat eine ganz interessante Geschichte in der Bibel. Does anyone know where that first starts, that first connection between Israel and Ethiopia is? Weiß irgendjemand, wer die erste, erste Verbindung zwischen Ethiopien und uh, uh, Israel? Israel, und yeah. is Israel ist? Has to do with King Solomon. Hat Somebody know. Salomo zu tun. Ja? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. The mm. Queen of Sheba. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, she Sheba. came, yeah? she came. There's very interesting traditions around that. Okay. Yes, that's very true. That's, that's the very first. Yeah. And uh, 
Cushite. She had a Cushite wife. And, Cu and the Cushites are, are the Ethiopians. This is up the region of Upper Egypt. So the Cushites, they come out of this region. So here is Philip, and the Lord directs him to this man who is reading the prophet Isaiah. Und so jetzt haben wir Philippus, und uh, der Geist, der führt ihn zu diesem Mann, der Jesaja uh, liest. We cannot miss the communication here that the Holy Spirit is telling us God cares about the nations. Und wir können es nicht verpassen hier. Wir müssen daran denken, dass, dass Gott in die Nationen interessiert ist. Lucas wants, Luke wants, the author wants us to know this is fulfillment of Acts 1.8. The gospel is going out to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Und Lukas, der will es ganz klar machen, den Punkt machen hier, dass hier die Erfüllung von Apostelgeschichte 1.8 ist, wo die das Evangelium hinausgeht bis zur Ende der Welt. Always, brothers and sisters, we need to understand that God cares about people that we may not feel comfortable with. Wir müssen das verstehen, dass Gott ein Interesse und äh, diese Menschen liebt, vielleicht sogar solche, die wir gar nicht sehr, ähm, sehr große Verbindung haben. We don't know, uh, the word eunuch means uh, obviously a man who's been castrated, but also could just refer to a court official. So der Kämmerer, wir wissen es nicht ganz genau, er könnte nur sein, dass er sein Mann war, der kastriert war, aber auch vielleicht ein Mann, der einfach äh, bei dem König äh, arbeitete. So I, I ask myself, Lord, who are the people uh, in my world that I, I think, well, they're just different. Äh, und ich dachte, wer sind die Leute in meiner äh, meine Umgebung, die vielleicht, ich denke, oh, die sind ja ein bisschen anders. I think, I think a big community in our world is the homosexual community. Ich denke, dass eine große uh, Gelegenheit die homosexuelle uh, Gemeinschaft oder Gesellschaft ist. And the church has just, you know, not thought about this people and thought, well, how will we come alongside? How will we reach out to them? Und wir als Gemeinde haben vielleicht noch nicht darüber genug nachgedacht, wie können wir diese Leute für Christus erreichen? God loves them. Jesus oder Gott liebt ihnen. He is reaching out to them. Und er will sie erreichen. And there is a spiritual hunger in all people. Und da ist ein äh, geistlicher Hunger in alle Menschen. So this man is reading Isaiah 53. So dieser Mann, der liest Jesaja 53. And that leads us to the third point, how the message of the gospel Changes lives. Und das bringt euch zu dem dritten Punkt, wie das Evangelium Leben verändert. So verse 30, Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked. Well, how can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage and told him the good news about... Philippus hin und hörte, dass er den Propheten Jesaja las und sagte, Verstehst du, was du liest? Er aber sagte, wie kann ich es, wenn mich niemand jemand anleitet? Und er bat Philippus, aufzusteigen und sich zu ihm zu setzen. Der Inhalt der Schrift, die er las, war folgende. Er ist wie ein Schaf zur Schlachtung geführt und wie ein Lamm stumm ist vor seinem Schere. So hat er seinen Mund nicht aufgetan. In seiner Erniedigung ist sein Gericht aufgehoben. Wer wird aber sein Geschlecht beschreiben? Denn sein Leben ist von der Erde weggenommen. Da fragte der Kämmerer, Philippus, ich bitte dich, von wem sagt der Prophet das? Wo sich selber oder auch jemand anderen? Da begann Philippus zu reden und ausgehend von dieser Schriftstelle predigte er ihm Jesus. Now I admit, this fellow was ready for the gospel. Ich muss schon zustehen, dieser war wirklich fertig für das Evangelium. Talk about an easy setup. Here he's already reading the gospel in one of the clearest Old Testament prophets. Und wir müssen es einfach sehen, dass er schon fertig war. Er liest das Evangelium 
so klar wie es möglich sein kann in Jesaja. But what we see in Philip is a pattern for us. Aber was wir in Philippus sehen ist ein Schema für we uns. We can all practice this kind of personal witness. Und wir können gerade diese Praxis nachbeahmen, so, so wie er es persönlich macht. Yeah, God was working in advance already in this eunuch's life. Gott, Gott hatte schon im Voraus in diesem Uh, so Philip runs alongside and listens. Und er rennt, ein Philippus rennt einfach an der Seite und hört. So a first step for us in being a witness is to come alongside people and listen. Das erste, was wir als Zeugen tun sollen, ist an der Seite gehen und horchen, zuhören. Ask questions. Und dann uh, Fragen stellen. Find out about their life. Und uh, etwas von dem Leben ausfinden wollen. Find ab out about their heart. Und uh, sehen, was ihr in ihr Herz ist. Not everyone is open. Nicht alle sind offen. But when we listen, we can understand. Aber wenn wir hören, zuhören, dann können wir verstehen. There is tremendous hunger for spiritual truth in the world today. Da ist ein großer Hunger für die biblische Wahrheit heutzutage in der People Welt. involved in other religions are doing so because they want to know God. Menschen in anderen Religionen, der, die tun das, was immer sie tun, weil sie Gott kennenlernen wollen. Rather than attacking them and saying you're wrong, we need to ask questions and come close so that we can share the good news. Anstatt der Gegner zu sein, sollen wir nahe kommen, um dass wir die Botschaft Ihnen, äh, Recently at our church in Langley, the pastor is preaching a series of messages about modern music. Yeah, even rap music. One sermon was about some of the most popular rap musicians. Yeah, so God had über rap music gepredigt. We usually associate that with bad language and, uh, you know, bad topics. Und, uh, für uns ist es ja immer etwas Schlechtes, wenn es in unserem Gedanken kommt. But here we find out that many of these musicians are asking questions about God and faith and life. Aber viele von diesen uh, Musikern, die stellen einfach Fragen über Gott und Leben. Now, friends here in the German service, I'm not asking you to start listening to rap music. Ich uh, möchte nicht, dass Sie unbedingt für Rap Musik jetzt uh, uh, Anhören sollt. But if somebody is going to come alongside these young people, they have to listen. Aber wenn jemand uh, an der Seite von diesen jungen Leuten kommt, dann müssen sie zuhören. Who is God calling you? Haben möchte, dass ihr an der Seite gehen sollt. Are you willing to to go up to a strange chariot and and say, what about your life? Tell me about what you are seeking. Bist du willig uh, zu einem ganz uh, um, einen Wagen zu gehen, der dich nicht bekannt ist, einem unbekannten Wagen zu gehen und Fragen stellen, wie geht es dir im Leben? Wenn wir älter werden, dann haben wir noch mehr Gelegenheiten, über die Ewigkeit zu sprechen. To talk about death and illness. Wir können über äh, Sterben und über Krankheit reden. People have questions. Viele Menschen haben Fragen. Now, I, I'm not going to talk a lot about the, the quick baptism that happened here. Ich möchte nicht viel über das ganz schnelle, uh, die ganz schnelle Taufe, die hier geschah, sprechen. We le read later in the book of Acts that Philip was known as the evangelist. Wir lesen in der Apostelgeschichte, dass Philippus der Evangelist, als Evangelist bekannt ist. And uh, he liked to baptize people. Und hier liebte Leute zu taufen. In, in the earlier part of chapter 8, he baptized Simon the sorcerer. Und hier hatte ja schon Simon äh, getauft am Anfang dieses Kapitels. And we're not sure. Simon seemed to be a little short on uh, a few basics of his Christian faith. Vielleicht äh, scheint es so, dass äh, Philippus ein bisschen äh, kurz war an die ganz fundamentale, einfache Sachen in der, im Glauben. But certainly, even though we like to see people established uh, in, in faith before we baptize them. Meistens ist es so, dass wir die Leute, die wir taufen, schon ganz äh, um, festgesetzten Glauben sehen wollen. But the New Testament gives permission to baptize even somebody who's a hitchhiker. Aber das Neue Testament gibt uns die Freiheit, dass wir auch die Mitfahrer einfach taufen dürfen. The last point is the powerful impact that simple obedience can have. Und das Letzte ist uh, der Impact, das Treue oder einfach uh, Gehorsam bringen kann. I have never been to Ethiopia, but I have met 
quite a few Ethiopians. Ich bin noch niemals in Äthiopien gewesen, habe aber eine ganze Menge von Äthiopiens kennengelernt. And I can tell you also from my friendship with a man who served in Africa for over 60 years. Ich kann euch auch erzählen von einem Freund, der in Afrika für eine lange Zeit gearbeitet hat. That this nation of people is unusually, even today, unusually receptive to the gospel. Und dass die Äthiopier auch heutzutage noch sehr offen sind, um das, uh, um die Botschaft aufzunehmen. This eunuch went back as a missionary. Dieser uh, Kämmerer, der ging zurück als ein Missionar. In the second century, the church father Irenaeus wrote that the Ethiopian eunuch went back and evangelized his people. Ja, wir lesen auch in der Geschichte, dass uh, uh, Kämmerer zurückgehen und ihre uh, eigene Leute evangelisierte. Perhaps you've heard of the church, the Word of Life Church. Vielleicht hast du von Wort des Lebens Gemeinde gehört. In the 1940s and 50s, uh, Howard Borlas, a friend of mine uh, who passed away now, but he was with Sudan Interior Mission. In Sudan wirkte ein Mann, ein, mein Freund in den 19, uh, 1940er, 50er Jahren. He, he was evangelizing and the Suzanne Interior Mission established the Word of Life Church. Und uh, er evangelisierte und uh, der, in, in Sudan uh, hat er dann diese Gemeinde gegründet. The communists came in and all the missionaries were sent out. Die Kommunisten, als sie reinkamen, wurden alle Missionare rausgeschickt. In the ensuing 20 years, ungefähr in 20 Jahre, that church that had been less than a million people grew to over eight million people. Die Gemeinde, die weniger als eine Million war, die wuchs zu mehr als acht Millionen. Today, the Word of Life Church, the Kalahuit Church of Ethiopia, und heute diese Gemeinde, die Kalahue Gemeinde in Äthiopien, they send out missionaries all over the world. Die senden Missionare aus über die ganze Welt. So, Ethiopia has been a country that God has used. Äthiopien ist ein Land gewesen, das Gott sehr gebraucht hat. They're responsive to the gospel. Und sie war antworteten positiv uh, für die Botschaft. And the roots are one simple act of obedience. Und es war einfach treu und gehorsam. And the man shared the gospel along the road to Gaza. Ein Mann, der einfach die Botschaft Jesu Christi weitergab, als er nach Gaza ging. And God changed nations. Und Gott änderte Nationen. Edward Kimball was a Sunday school teacher in Chicago. Edward Kimball, der war ein Sonntagsschullehrer in Chicago. He had a class of young boys. Er hatte eine Sonntagsschulklasse junge Männer. One student in particular really troubled this Sunday school teacher. Eines der Schüler, der war sehr schlecht. He uh, always fell asleep. Und der schlief immer ein. So the Sunday school teacher went to meet him at the place where he worked, a und, shoe store. Und der Sonntagsschullehrer, der ging hin, wo er war, um ihm dort zu, zu begegnen. Er war in einem Schuhgeschäft. He didn't know what to say, but he challenged the young man to follow Christ. Er wusste nicht, was er sag, sagen sollte, aber er gab ihnen den Aufruf, Jesus Christus nachzufolgen. That young man was D.L. Moody. Und der Mann war D.L. Moody. He became one of the greatest evangelists that America ever produced. Und er ist später dann eines der größten Evangelisten von Amerika gewesen. He went to England and a man named F. B. Meyer gave his heart to the Lord. Und er ging nach England und F. B. Meyer wurde auch ein Christ. Well, he was a Christian, but he was mobilized in mission. Er war ein Christ, aber er wurde dann in der Mission engagiert. That influenced a man named Wilbur Chapman. Und Wilbur Chapman wurde dann äh, da, daraufhin auch äh, bean, äh, beeinflusst. And he brought along an American evangelist when he came back named Billy Sunday, who dies, was a baseball player. Und dieser beeinflusste Billy Sunday, der war ein Baseballspieler. Billy Sunday's preaching had an impact on a man named Mordecai Ham. Billy Sunday's, der hat einen Impact im Leben von Mordecai Ham. Mordecai Ham who was preaching revival meetings in North Carolina. Und er hatte Erweckungspredigen gebracht in North Carolina. At one of his last meetings, he prayed, God, would you bring a revival? Und in die, eines dieser letzten uh, uh, Gemeinschaften, die sie hatten, betete er, bitte bring Erweckung. And in that North Carolina meeting, a young man named Billy Graham came to Christ. Und da wurde Billy Graham zu Jesus geführt. But we can track it all the way back to Edward Kimball, a Sunday school teacher in Chicago. Wir können es einfach alles zurückführen zu Kerry Kimball, der ein Sonntagsschullehrer war in Chicago. Where, God, where has God put you? Wo hat Gott dich hingestellt? 
You and I, we can be obedient. He is ask, he is speaking to us. Du und ich, wir können gehorsam sein. Er spricht zu uns. He's working in people's lives. Er arbeitet in unser Leben. When we faithfully share the good news of Jesus. Wenn wir treu das Evangelium weitergeben. God changes nations. Dann wird Gott Nationen ändern. Let's pray. Wir beten. Father, we thank you for your word. Wir danken für dein Wort. And we thank you for the gospel. Wir danken für das Evangelium that we see here in Isaiah that Jesus you died for us you suffered for us dass wir hier in Jesaja gesehen haben dass Jesus für uns gestorben und gelitten hat and we thank you for the holy spirit that wir, guides us on mission wir danken für den heiligen geist der uns in unserer mission leitet now release your people lord und wir bitten dass du uns äh, freiheit geben möchtest send us out again sende uns out aus give, wieder give us ears to listen to your spirit Gib uns Ohren zu hören zu deinem Geist. And give us eyes to see how you're working in the people around us. Und Augen zu sehen, wie du in den Leben unserer Freundin um uns wirkst. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Wir beten es in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Möge jetzt die Gnade unseres Herrn Jesus Christus, die Liebe Gottes und die Gemeinschaft und die Leitung des Heiligen Geistes mit uns gehen, jetzt und immer da. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you here. I uh, realize there's still quite the buzz of people in the, in the foyer visiting together, but uh, I, I trust that uh, you will find your way into the auditorium here, and we are looking forward to uh, worshiping together. I want to welcome you here to King Road this morning with the uh, verse from John chapter 16. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. God is at work, friends, and God is at work uh, in our community and around the world, and we want to hear stories of that this morning, and uh, trust that uh, we will be encouraged uh, from spending time together in worship as a family in, in the Lord. I want to uh, just uh, start with a couple of little thank yous and announcements this morning, and the first one is, is very simple. How many of you were at the MCC sale this weekend in any way, shape, or form? Okay. So if you were there, how many of you had a Portzel Chi? All right. How many of you had more than one? How many of you have a doctor's appointment tomorrow to check your cholesterol? All right. Here's a little trivia for you. King Road Church with the many volunteers uh, organized by Irv and by Esther. Thank you for your organization. Who can guess here? Approximately how many Portzelchia were fried and sold? Did someone say 40,000? Oh, you know, that's insider information, Anita. Oh, yes, she does. You know from last year. Approximately 14,000, let alone all the other stuff that was there. And so thank you. It is so encouraging to see how many people were involved, and, and we thank you for your efforts and uh, hope you showered 20 times to get rid of the smell of the grease. As I said uh, last week, fall is in full swing. And so uh, we're back to the, our routines. Sunday school started this morning for all ages. We've got clubs starting for the kids. We've got mini rotors and rotors. We've got care groups. We have a parent series starting. Look at, for the details in the bulletin. And there are many opportunities. We, we've got an adult Sunday school series uh, that's going to uh, begin in terms of asking some of the tough questions we have about our faith. And these are all opportunities for you to bring others, to engage, and to become and, uh, and participate. And so we welcome you to do that. I would now welcome you to stand up, bow with me as we pray, and then stay standing as we sing together as we begin our morning with worship. God, thank you. Thank you that you love us and care for us. Thank you that you are here. God, may the kind of energy we have when we get together to, to catch up about our weeks or when we serve together, may that rub um, off and may it spill over into our lives, even this morning as we corporately gather for worship. God, you know what it is that we need from you this morning. And so bless those who are leading, who will share and through your spirit, impact our lives, impact us with the message we need from you today. And so thank you that in the freedom we have here, we can worship you. We love you, Jesus. Amen.
can separate even if I ran away your love never fails I know I still make mistakes you have new mercies for me every day
take our weakness. You set your treasure in jars of clay. So take this heart, Lord. I'll be your vessel, the world to see your life in.
be seated. It is because we know who Jesus is and because we are God's children that we can uh, come before him. And uh, I have a few announcements I want to make before we spend some time praying with each other and for each other. Um, Sometimes the announcements are filled with good news and we're excited and we rejoice and we want to go and tell everyone and other times it's pretty hard news. And so I would venture to guess that most of us here this morning um, have something that is exciting and something that is burdening us. And so as we spend some time now in the next few minutes praying, I pray that God may speak to you and encourage you in exactly the way that you need. So uh, I want to uh, highlight some announcements. Some of them are in our bulletin, some, um, some of them are not, but uh, you know the drill. Uh, we, we, we don't just like printing these and wasting paper. Please read them. Um, it makes our office staff very happy, and if they're happy, I'm happy. So uh, please, please read the announcements. But you, you will see there must be something in the air called love. I, in all my years here, I don't recall three engagements announced on the same Sunday. I do remember three in a row, um, but, uh, and I don't know if any of them are here today. They are scattered in different parts of the world, but congratulations to Sophie Schmidt and Nick Kyle, to Gerald Becker and Emily Wegner, and to Carissa Weens and Christopher Smith. And so, in abstentia, some of you are here. That's, uh, that is great. Um, so, let's say congratulations to all of you. <laughs> Sorry, no kissing until your wedding day. Not going to ask you to do that now, um, but we are excited. We also have a new face to introduce in our church office. Sammy, are you here somewhere today? Can you stand up? Sammy is going to be the new Simone. So Simone is over there. Can you wave? She's having a baby, and which means she somehow doesn't want to be in our office. Um, can't blame her. But Sammy is uh, joining us. Thank you. Um, we look forward to that. And can you? Uh, sometimes I'm just amazed how God answers prayer. At the top of our list was ideally that someone would also be able to speak both of the languages we use here, and we have someone who can uh, work in the German language as well, and so if there's any translation issues, it's all Sammy's fault. <laughs> no, no pressure, even though Heinz proofreads everything, so uh, we'll, we'll just blame Heinz, that's easier. Um, we also, uh, when we have good news, we often have more challenging news. And so I want us to really take seriously our call to pray for those who are fighting illness. Uh, some have family members on their deathbeds. Some have had surgeries and are in hospital. You, you can see some names there in the bulletin. And pray for ongoing for Armin Clausen and Ron Warkenton, who had surgery this week. And uh, we also want to pray for the Penner family, for Art and Inge and uh, Adeline and Irv and Brian and Laura, Their mom passed away yesterday morning, Eva Penner, um, after quite a struggle. And so uh, there is a sense of relief, but there's also a real sense of loss. And so we want to come alongside of you as a family. Uh, I can announce that if all things go according to plan, the funeral will be here on Thursday morning. But it is uh, subject to confirmation. So please uh, come and do us a favor, check the website, uh, call us here tomorrow well, or Tuesday. By Tuesday morning, we will know for sure. And so that is the plan, and we want to support you and walk together um, as you walk through this period of time. Also, uh, I've been asked to uh, tell you a little bit about a phone call this morning that came from Lebanon. And uh, the family that we are waiting for, desperately waiting for, who have been promised a entry into Canada, who we have prepared for for over a year, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, they called uh, Herman this morning and uh, with a desperate kind of question, when are we coming to Canada? And so you know the efforts we have done with contacting our members of parliament and, and with praying, but I can't help but wonder if perhaps this week, we set aside some time to pray and maybe even to fast, to skip a meal and pray, God, would you answer the prayers for this family that so desperately is waiting to come, who we want to love and accept here, whose house is ready for them. And so please uh, join us as we pray. Um, that would, uh, would be welcome. Church members, also please note there is an important, very important membership meeting tomorrow night at 730 
Uh, we will be updating you on our staffing situation and consider future needs regarding our pastoral staff at King Road. This is one of those meetings you should attend, and so we'll see you here tomorrow at 7.30. As we pray, I have a simple question for you. How many of you here this morning would be bold enough to say, I would like someone to pray for me? Without giving details. Some of you bold enough to admit that? I sure hope so. Um, I think the invitation I feel led to share with you is this growing sense that I have that we need to walk together in such openness and joy that we can share our pains and our burdens with each other. And so I'm going to ask you to please stand as we pray. Ushers, you can come forward. Once we've done praying, you can, you can have a seat while we sing. But as you stand, please stand. I would like you to take the first minute or so and we are going to pray for each other. You, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk something here. I want you all to pray out loud. I know this uh, it doesn't work maybe as well in our culture, but pray, and if you know the people standing beside you, pray by name. But let's pray for each other, lift up our voices together, and then I will lead us in a corporate time of pray, prayer. So let's pray together. God, and you know that uh, we need wisdom and strength for our time together tomorrow. May you, may you go with us. God alone, we are lost. We acknowledge our desperate need for you. God, there were some this morning bold enough to raise their hand and say, I need prayer. And as you remind me of the faces I saw and the names that I know, help me to remember to pray. And help us all to remember to pray, to pray for each other, because you've called us to be your body, unified in you. And so we have opportunities to pray for those who are recovering from surgery, to pray for those who are suffering loss, such as the Penner family, to pray for those who are anticipating a marriage. We thank you for Sophie and Nick, for Gerald and Emily, for Carissa and Christopher. And we thank you for the fact that you know the deepest longings of our heart and the deepest challenges that we face. God, I know I need wisdom far beyond my years, and I pray that uh, you answer that as Scripture says you will, that we just need to ask. I pray that you be with um, our church leadership, our council and pastoral committee, and us as staff as we continue to work together for uh, striving after what you've called us to do and to be here at King Road Church. I thank you for those serving in many different parts of the world. I pray for Stefan and Leticia, for Ruben and Selena, for the entire group, in fact, that's uh, with DMI now in, uh, in Mexico, for uh, those serving in, in restricted areas uh, where we can't even mention their name, or their country, but we thank you that you are um, at work. We thank you for the group that is here um, preparing to go and serve with, uh, with MB Missions on the Trek program, and we thank you for the way they have uh, already had a good start to their training, and we pray that you bless them as they prepare to go and serve. God, you know we are faced with so many opportunities, and, uh, and I pray that you may just stir in our hearts a growing sense of um, excitement and invigoration of following you and saying, hey, come and join us. This parenting class might be the, the perfect thing for you to join me at. Or this youth activity, why don't you come and be my friend and, and uh, why don't we just go and have some fun together and get to know others and to get to know your word. And God, you have gifted so many people here who are making a difference. And yet you also lead us sometimes through dark valleys. And uh, so those who are facing challenging health situations in particular. Those in the hospital, pray for Lena and for Agatha. Um, and pray also especially this morning for Hossip and Alice with uh, their children. God, they're desperate. And uh, when we're impatient, I can't imagine how impatient they are. And so God, open the doors of bureaucracy. May you uh, let nothing stand in the way of them getting their travel papers and documents and showing up here. And we anticipate... Uh, 
that uh, you will give us opportunities to practically show them much love and care as, as we've been waiting for a long time, but we live in a comfort and with our families around here, they don't. And so we, we pray for them and remind us to pray. And so God, thank you. Thank you that we can trust you. This is your church. You are our God. You go with us. And this morning, as we again consider how you lead and guide us, as we hear about spirit-directed mission, I pray that if there is someone here this morning who feels that they aren't sure what is next or where to go, that they may have the boldness to come and speak to someone because we want to journey together. And thank you that you are the one who is leading us. God, it is such a privilege to be together. We anticipate how you are working and what you will do and the fruit that you will bring to yourself as it says in scripture, the harvest is ripe. And so thank you for those who are using their gifts. May you give us joy. Thank you that we can trust you. Thank you also that uh, you provide for us. May you give us joy and generosity as we return some of our financial um, resources to you. You are the owner of everything. Help us to discover the joy that comes when we are simply stewards and we hold things loosely and we entrust them to you. And so thank you. Thank you that we can worship together this morning. So I pray in your name. Amen. Please be seated and let's sing.
We are privileged this morning to uh, have Heinrich uh, Rempel with us uh, from Germany. And uh, we are, I think, growing in our connections with MB Missions and with some of what God is doing in, in Europe in particular. And so, Heinrich, welcome here. I'm going to let you explain your connection and uh, share with us a little bit of uh, how God is at work and how we can pray for you and your ministry uh, over there in Europe. Welcome. Thank you so much. So, first of all, I want to pass on... Uh, uh, greetings uh, from our church in Germany, from Bielefeld, where I am from. And um, so I'm uh, working with MP Mission Europe and Central Asia. Uh, and uh, it happened that we, are, we have our annual meetings uh, here in Abbotsford. Uh, the Glo Global Council, all uh, regions, um, the leaders of all regions came together to, uh, uh, for a consultation, for prayer time together. And uh, so it is... Uh, yeah, I just wanted to use the chance to visit your church. Uh, I, uh, you are almost the one church that I ever visited here in Abbotsford. I think uh, the third time. Uh, once I had the chance to preach here, uh, but today uh, is just a short uh, testimony. Uh, I want to say um, thank you, uh, first of all, for the trackers that you accepted as a church. So they are sitting here in this bench here. And uh, so uh, um, it is the largest tr uh, tracker group that we have sent from Germany so far. Eight people from Germany and uh, two people are from France. Uh, and uh, this group is very exceptional uh, because, um, not only because they are so, so, um, so um, uh, in number, uh, great in number, but because my daughter is also among them. So, and um, so you might, um, you can guess who could that be from this picture, who looks like, uh, like me a little bit? Uh, you can give me the answer after the service. Um, uh, secondly, I want to say thank you for your support. Uh, you uh, contributed to a camp ministry in Ukraine called Dream Kids for unfortunate families in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, so it was a, a very great uh, ministry. Many, many families and children um, uh, were able to attend, uh, to hear the word of God, and uh, to get connected to the church in Zaporozhye, uh, and uh, it is a great ministry. Thank you so much for your contribution to that. I want uh, just to uh, give you a short um, yeah, insight in, in two countries, and it is, of course, difficult in a few minutes to say much about this, but uh, Turkey is what is uh, on our heart um, in Europe. Um, we have um, there on the one side, on the one hand, uh, difficulties. Um, uh, two uh, American or Canadian families were expelled from the country. They could not receive a visa, uh, had to, um, to move. They live now in uh, Austria, and from there they try to serve Turkey. Uh, one family, uh, due to cancer, had to leave, um, leave the ministry and is living now in Winnipeg. Uh, but God is raising up um, national workers, and he is doing great things. And um, I want just to share, um, uh, just uh, several weeks ago, there was this baptism in Istanbul. Uh, Fourteen people got baptized. Never before such a, a large group in, in our uh, ministry there. Uh, Brother Hakan, you, uh, maybe someone of you know him. Uh, I think, uh, he believe he was here also in a church maybe. And, and witnessed. He's also right now here in, an, in another church, um, and um, he's leading a, a tremendous ministry, a media ministry, but then also follow up uh, in many villages and many uh, small towns, uh, visiting and establishing small groups. And uh, so we are dreaming of uh, starting about three new churches next year. And um, that just this um, church um, started, was started uh, just several months ago uh, after the families, the foreign families had to leave. And, um, uh, and we, we are very glad that this church um, uh, is, is there in Istanbul. The church is called the Rescue Church, kind of like the rescue people on a beach who are uh, saving people from drowning. So this church has this, uh, this uh, call of God rescue people from drowning uh, in, uh, yeah, in their sins and uh, just hopeless, hopelessness. Um, Hakan is uh, regularly posting news and uh, just this family came to Christ uh, just uh, a week ago. 
He posted uh, by WhatsApp, sent the picture, pray for this family, they accepted Christ. Uh, this morning I checked my messages and again uh, he posted uh, a man, an elderly man who accepted Jesus Christ. Um, uh, Turkey has been a country where for over 50 years, the uh, mission history, of mission history, um, the number of believers was less, was uh, smaller than the number of missionaries. And just several years ago, uh, it, it changed. There are more believers than missionaries in Turkey. And uh, the, the, the soil is, um, I think, becoming softer. People are coming to Christ. This is a great, and I want to invite you to pray for Turkey, for the ministry of a mission there for Brother Hakan. Uh, the second insight is Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. Uh, it happened that um, uh, more than 100 years ago, Mennonites settled in this area and, um, uh, and started to witness there a little bit uh, under the Kyrgyz uh, people, and, uh, but then to, uh, during the communist revolution, uh, it, it ended. And um, just in the 90s, uh, a new ministry started in Kyrgyzstan. God opened uh, um, yeah, the hearts of people, and uh, now the Kyrgyz church is growing. Uh, there are more than 15,000 believers uh, among the Kyrgyz people. And so we, as MB Mission, we are partnering with the Kyrgyz church. Uh, we are trying to reach with the Kyrgyz believers the neighboring countries who are uh, living in complete, complete darkness, especially Tajikistan. Tajikistan uh, in the Pamir Mountains, very high altitude. Um, so there is a plateau of um, yeah, the Pamir Plateau where uh, we don't know of any believers, no churches and uh, no believers that we know of. And so we want to reach them. Uh, we want to, um, together with this Kyrgyz church, who is experiencing growth and joy, um, we want to do uh, ministry to bring the gospel to, to Tajikistan, to the Pamir Mountains. Um, Kyrgyzstan also experiences a lot of uh, persecution and, and trouble. Um, just several months ago, it happened, it happened uh, what we see here on these pictures, we might not uh, we are not able maybe to read this, but uh, someone broke into this church and um, sprayed uh, with paint on a wall. We will kill you. We will um, uh, kill you because you are teaching our children. You have to teach about Allah, not about Jesus, and all kind of things like that. And uh, so our young believers who uh, troubled by, by these, uh, by fear, of course, uh, they came together for prayer meeting. And we see them sitting and praying and giving, uh, asking God for courage, courage in, in this situation. And we want to invite you also to pray, to pray for, uh, for courage for them, and then also for this outreach to Tajikistan, where um, this church uh, that we are partnering with is sending four young people, four young missionaries, kind of like trekkers, sending them to Tajikistan for a year. To, um, to be in schools, to work with children, doing sport ministry, uh, helping those who are needy, and, uh, and then hoping that God will stir up something. We don't know what, but we are trusting God that he will lead us uh, in, in this country. So once again, please pray for Europe and Central Asia. I, be, uh, I, I will be glad to answer more questions. I will be here after the service. If you want to pray for us, as for my wife and me, and for uh, our family, you're welcome to do that. There are prayer cards out there. Uh, thank you so much that I was able to share with you a little. I get so encouraged to hear how God is at work. Rob, would you come and join me, please? Uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Rob Thiessen. Uh, he is our BC Mennonite Brethren Conference Minister and uh, just uh, been a real encouragement to me over the years. Some of you uh, men here may remember he spoke at our barbecue, uh, well, it must be about a year or so ago. And so he's with us this morning and he is going to share with us as we continue our, our series through Acts and just uh, share with us uh, from God's words. Let me pray for you, Rob. God, thank you for Rob, and thank you for how you've gifted him and equipped him. And so may you just bless him now to share with freedom and joy the message you have uh, from your word for us this morning. Thank you, as I pray in your name. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Leonard. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's good to be here with you this morning at King Road, and I bring you greetings from the other uh, MB churches around British Columbia, uh, all the way from Williams Lake, where the fires are burning. I was there last weekend, and uh, south uh, eastern British Columbia, we have churches all around the province, so it's great to work with the churches. I'm glad it's the Lord's Church, because I would break out in a cold sweat if I was responsible for everybody, but we have about 100 churches and they're following the Lord, and my work is to go and encourage churches, uh, especially to encourage them to be on mission, preaching the gospel, encourage the pastors, help them with leadership, whatever issues they're dealing with. Of course, you know Dennis Federal, he's uh, my partner in the ministry, and Dennis also travels with me to encourage. I need somebody to talk about uh, uh, troubles, and, and that's great to have a partner because we, sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry. Uh, we <laughs> worry about uh, the churches together in the Lord, but it's a good work. We also have our camps. We run the five camps in British Columbia, and then some of our churches have camps too. Like you have your own camp. I think you call it Trek, and that's been going for many years. Amazing ministry. Willow Park in uh, Kelowna also has its own camp. In fact, that church's camp got so big that they outgrew our camp, which is Gardam Lake in the area. And so this one church has more kids at their week of camp than our physical camp could host. They have to find a different venue. And uh, that's an amazing church, Willow Park. I was up visiting with that church and its leadership team once. And uh, so we were sitting around the table with their staff. And I said, so you have a small group ministry at the church? I just was curious how they do ministry. Do you have life groups? Yeah, yeah. They said um, the youth department, they have life groups. I said, well, how many life Life groups do you have? So, um, they were about 250. And uh, so I, I looked at the youth pastor, who's kind of a bushy beard, low cap, skateboard kind of a dude. And I'm like, so 250 people, how many groups? No, he said, there's 250 groups. It's about 1,000 kids in the youth group. And uh, so I swallowed hard, and <laughs> took a look again at the skateboarder guy, and thought, all right, you know, some interesting things God is doing. Uh, so I get all kinds of surprises going around seeing what God is up to, and, uh, and it's encouraging. And it's great to be here at King Road today, too. So I mentioned the camps. We've got the college, Columbia Bible College. Uh, it's amazing. Our offices are there on campus now. They have a banner year of students, incoming students, biggest freshman class, I think, that maybe ever, and 500-plus uh, students at the college. So it's great to see, but more than just the numbers, we're so excited that the Bible College is an emphasis on training young men and women for ministry, equipping them not only for leadership in the church, but in marketplace leadership and mission leadership. I want to say, let's serve Christ wherever we are. And we're so grateful to have a school like that. Really encourage you to think about that uh, as a, a, an investment, especially those of you who are parents. Don't just encourage your kids to get a career. Uh, ask, encourage them to spend some time studying the Word of God to be established in their faith. And then, of course, the church planting work through C to C. We see churches being planted around British Columbia. That comes in waves. Sometimes there's lots. Right now, there's churches planting churches, which is exciting. And maybe King Road, well, you are involved, especially among the Spanish workers. And so in many ways, through Ruben and Selena and through your own support of the workers, uh, this is an important church planting work. We're going to be looking at the book of Acts, and uh, we're going to get stressed a little bit. In the first service, the German service, which was great, I was telling them that I heard a Swedish speaker this summer talk on creativity, and uh, this was at the Global Leadership Summit. He was very entertaining, but the Swedish man said, he told a story, I can't imitate his Swedish accent, but he, uh, he told a story of his brother who was visiting a uh, holiday in Germany, and at the place he was at, there was a uh, swimming pool, indoor swimming pool, so his brother the Swedish fellow decided to go for a swim. And uh, in the pool, it was a small indoor pool, but it had lanes painted on the floor, you know. But he decided to just swim the short way back and forth across. There was, the pool was empty except for one man who was sitting on the side in a lounge chair, lounge chair there sitting there, reading or something. So he's swimming back and forth like this. And this man comes over to the side of the pool and he goes, what are you doing? Bastustu, you know. Why are you swimming this way with his German? Why are you swimming this way, you know. He said, the lanes go this way. The Swedish guy looked at him. He said, well, yeah, I just wanted to swim the short way. I'm not bothering anybody. Yeah, well, you're bothering me, he says. You know, the lanes are going this way. 
And so this Swedish fellow thought to himself, well, he wants me to go the long way, but the longest way really is diagonally from corner to corner across the pool. So he said to himself, that's how I'll swim. So he swam corner to corner. <laughs> well, the German guy just got up and left. You know, he couldn't stand it. So, so today uh, we're going to see that the Holy Spirit, sometimes he leads us to swim differently outside of the lanes. And sometimes we like it to be just, you know, orderly. But the book of Acts is not an orderly book. In fact, I really love your display and somebody was very artistic. But really, if you want to picture the book of Acts, maybe you should have a little stack of dynamite. <laughs> that would be more of what we see in the book of Acts. I mean, it's just amazing release of power and transformation. And sometimes it looks chaotic and yet... All through it, God is doing amazing things. So the book of Acts you're into, and here the church has a pattern for how God works. And the book of Acts reveals not only God's heart for the church, but the source of power for the church. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus tells his disciples that you will be my witnesses from Jerusalem, Judea, and, to, and Samaria, and to the ends of the world. And we're going to see that passage that very word fulfilled in the passage we're looking at today in chapter 8. Then in chapter 2, we read about the coming of the Holy Spirit, where this group of disciples, people at a prayer gathering, very devout people, but they were transformed. In a moment, by the coming of the Holy Spirit, everything changed. The trajectory of their lives, the release of the church, the church the, what it meant to be a Jewish person following God, the seed was planted, the fuse was lit, and the power of God came. And we are the inheritors. We are in that family of people empowered by the Holy Spirit with a mission. And so we want to open our hearts up. I pray that your heart would be open today. I want to be challenged. Say, Lord, if this is your church, if this is who I am as a believer, then use me and guide me. And there are specifically four things in chapter 8. We're looking at verse 26 to the end of the chapter. Specifically four things that I want to take uh, for us to look at. First of all, how God is able to guide us and others by his spirit. So it's a little bit about how God guides. Because we're going to look at a story together. And we're going to see some amazing things. So how God guides. Uh, we're also going to see how God sees and loves hitchhikers. Now that's a bit of a stretch. There's no hitchhiker in the story. But it came to mind when I was reading the story. So I used it. But there's some odd people in this story, one particular person that's odd. And I would say, sometimes I think hitchhikers are odd. Amen? I always have a thought about it when I stop and pick them up going, I wonder what's going to happen to me from this strange person that I just picked up. And not everybody's like that. Some of you, you know, I, I don't want to, but, you know, you look at people, sometimes you think, I wonder, okay, maybe this person is not, but I don't like their dog, actually, you know, when they're hitchhiking the dog. Sometimes I've picked up hitchhikers and then, <clears throat> somebody I didn't see pops out of the ditch. You know, it's like, okay, there's more than one person here. And the person coming out of the ditch is really weird. So anyway, so God loves these people. And how the message of the gospel, thirdly, transforms lives. That's the power of the gospel is totally in this passage. And life change happens in a miraculous way through the gospel. And lastly, we're going to see how the simple obedience to Christ in these verses has a world-changing impact. So let's look at the scripture together, and we'll pray as before we read. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the engaging stories of normal people who live extraordinary lives. And Lord, we want to be normal people, but we want to live extraordinary lives by your spirit. So speak to us today. We open up our hearts to you. Give us ears to hear and uh, fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 26, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch. You all know what a eunuch is? We're not quite sure actually what this eunuch is. Could he be a man who has been castrated? Very likely, that's what the word eunuch means. But it's also used generally to speak of a court official. So in those days, it was typical for a court official, especially somebody in charge of the king's harem, to be a eunuch for obvious or not so obvious reasons. Parents, explain to your children at some appropriate time. 
Uh, but nonetheless, this is this person. He's an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. Well, how can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before the shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth in his humiliation. He was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants for his life was taken from the earth. I, I just, when I think of but an Ethiopian and a, and a court official, I, I, you know, he would have an accent, you know, and I can't make uh, uh, you know, a Ugandan, Kenyan, Ethiopian accent. But it would have, you know, I just picture him having a deep voice, man. Uh, how can I explain if someone doesn't say it to me? You know, so it's just that there's a cultural thing going on here. And this is an unusual conversation. So this eunuch asked, eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? And Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azot Azotus and traveled about preaching all the gospel, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. So we see, first of all, God's guidance in this passage. Now, this is a transitional chapter in the book of Acts. And the guidance that I want to, uh, it touches not only our verses, but begins in chapter 8, verse 1, where we read uh, about, the, about Saul who was presiding or watching over the the, the killing, the, the martyrdom of Stephen. And it says in verse 8, 1, On that day a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered through Judea and Samaria. So the church is scattered through persecution. And so God is able, first of all, to guide and does guide and release the church through a great persecution. Um, this is... This is amazing and so good for us to remember that our God guides even through sovereignly through circumstances beyond our control. That's good news. And I'm so grateful for that. There's so many things that are in this world going on that God is doing that don't depend on me. I can't figure it out. I can't control it. But God is at work. God released the Jerusalem church, which was very, you know, insular. In, it was preoccupied with the Jewish ways, and pretty much it was kind of a messianic Jewish movement. So they all kept worshiping in the temple. They all kept observing all the feasts, but they were growing and learning. But God had on his heart to reach the nations. So he <laughs> threw a bomb in there, and persecution happened, and dear saints were killed, and that was a horrible chapter, and people were grieving at Stephen's loss, but God was up to something. God was scattering his people like seeds spread around. And God works. This has happened repeatedly in history. In China under communism, Mao declared it an atheist state. In 1949, missionaries were driven out. Christians were imprisoned. Pastors were killed. Chinese believers were cut off from missionaries from the Western church. But a church that at that time numbered about a half million people today has grown to over 60 million Christians. That's conservative estimates. At the current rate of growth by the year 230, which is how many years away from us now? 13 years. Can you believe that? In 13 years, we'll be at 2030. They estimate the church in China at growth rates will be 200 million people. Easily the largest church in the world. More, you know, more Chinese than probably all the Western countries combined. More Chinese Christians. Phenomenal. And the persecution released incredible growth. We heard about the, the growth in Turkey and 
We're seeing that. We're in the middle of a revival, a, a, a new thing happening in the Muslim world. When I was in Bible college in, in South Carolina years ago at a very mission focus, we would repeatedly have uh, missionaries from the Muslim world come and share. And this, you know, the word was, you would go as a missionary to a Muslim country, you could serve 20, 25 years. And if you saw five people come to Christ, that was good fruit. That's what it was like. Nobody was coming to Christ in these Muslim countries. As Brother Henry, or Heinrich was sharing, more missionaries in Turkey than people. But that tide has shifted, and God has used persecution. Even the unfolding of ISIS, what's happening, has, speaks to many Muslim people because there are many genuine seekers among Muslims, people who want to know the truth. That's why they're seeking. Not everyone, but many of them are. And so they watch these terrible things happening, and they're pushed away and saying, we want to know the Prince of Peace. They begin researching and understanding. And not only that, but God miraculously reveals himself as he did to Brother Hakan in a dream or a vision. And he's revealing himself. Our Mennonite family has experienced the same thing. We're in these countries, South America, the North America. We're in countries because of persecution. And God landed us here and gave us a mission. We don't seek these things, but God uses them. And that's important as we think about world events today. It's easy. The world around us is wringing their hands about everything that's going on. Oh, look at the disasters. And we don't shrug our shoulders. We're concerned. We're concerned about global warming. We want to do our part, do the right thing. But our God works through circumstances, and he has a purpose. And we need to have a look ahead. We need to be thinking and praying about how God would guide us. God, how do you want to use me in this circumstance, in this crisis? What are you doing? Not only that, but God guides us specifically by speaking to us. And maybe this is the personal part. So it's encouraging to know that God guides sovereignly, that he's at work, even though we're not maybe aware of it. But here, Philip is getting specific direction from an angel and from the Spirit of God. Now, I wish for more details. Was this like a flaming angel, you know, with a sword? I don't know what that would help me, but there's a, what, kind of a, what, kind of an angel, what kind of an angelic visit was it? Do people today hear from angels? I, I don't know that I ever heard from an angel, but honestly, something happened to me once in church about 10 years ago. I was sitting right there ready to preach at North Langley Community Church. I don't know whether I just looked so down in the mouth or what, but all of a sudden somebody was beside me, tapping me on the shoulder, and they just said to me, God wants you to know he has this church in his hand. Don't worry about it. He will build his church. He will feed the fire. I turned around to look, and I saw the back of the person walking up the aisle, but I didn't recognize him. And I'd been the pastor there a long time. And I thought, I know everybody in this church. Who is that person? You know, but then I had to go up and speak. And ever since that, I wondered, did I have an angel that day that just tapped me on the shoulder and whispered to me? I don't know. And some of you have had things like that happen. Angels do speak. But God is guiding. That's what we're seeing in this passage. Philip's just a normal person. And in the book of Acts, God is guiding his people all the time. That's one of the things that I love reading the book of Acts for, is the way that whether it's the apostle Paul or other Otherwise, they get how they get guidance from God. I know at one time, I remember one chapter, Paul's reading, and he's, he's like, I'm trying to get into this country, but, but it says that he can't get in, and so he says, well, the Spirit of Jesus stopped us. And I think, well, what, I mean, he, he just wasn't successful. How did he tell that that was the Spirit of Jesus? But it's part of guidance. It's personal. It's God being active in our lives. If you have submitted your life to Jesus, you too have the Spirit of God living in you. In Romans chapter 8, we say no one... Uh, can be in Christ, except the Spirit of Christ be in them. So if you've been surrendered your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit is the one who comes and seals in your heart and convicts you of sin. He's at work in your life. And if you're a Christian, surrender your life fully. Say, Lord, fill me with your Spirit. Use me. And if the Spirit is living in you, if you are in Christ, He's in you, then He wants to speak to you. Someone says, no, 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 God speaks to me through the word of God. Hey, amen. He speaks, yes, he speaks through the word of God. Of course, this is our anchor. This is the, where we learn about Jesus' ways and God's heart. And, and we look at the book of Acts for guidance about how we should do things and how we should live. But that same spirit came upon all of us and he lives in us and God wants to speak to us. 
This is where I'm preaching to myself. No, Rob, wake up in the morning and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Don't just count on God's sovereign direction. Don't just count on your time. And when I open the word of God, I ask, God, speak to me through your word. But then there's my day-to-day activities. Then there's the lunch appointment that I have. There's the waitress that I talk to. There's the person cutting my hair. And I ask, God, speak to me. Use me. What do you want me to say in this situation? What are you doing in this person's life? God guides us and speaks to us. You are, in, you are students. You are workers. Do you think about this for the people that work with you, for you? God, show me. I asked the Lord about picking up hitchhikers. I don't always cooperate, saying, Lord, no, that person looks too scary. But, Lord, and I have some amazing conversations. I picked one up last year from Pemberton to Whistler. And just ask some questions. I have an advantage. You know, they, I, if you ask lots of questions, they ask, oh, uh, yes, uh, and what do you do? Well, I tell them I'm a pastor, and then I can start a conversation or not. Sometimes it shuts down the conversation. But you ask the Lord, use me. Show me how I can be led by the Spirit, and he will use you. That's the greatest thing. And uh, so active. So anyway, God sees and loves hitchhikers, the next thing. So this Ethiopian eunuch, I think he's like a hitchhiker. But maybe it's Philip that's a hitchhiker. Because the Ethiopian eunuch is the one with a chariot, right? And Philip is the guy that's on foot. Anyway, it's a conversation along the road. That's why I use that metaphor. Now, to have a chariot is a big deal. And notice, this chariot seems to have a driver. Because the Ethiopian eunuch seems to instruct him to, you know, pull over or get on the way. So we're not quite sure if he's parked. You know, maybe the horses are grazing. But anyway... People didn't have chariots in those days. It's not like nowadays everybody's got a car. People did not have chariots. And this fellow was like, he was like the official treasurer of Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia in the Bible times is, uh, is upper Egypt and modern Sudan. So n- nowadays, if you look on the map, Ethiopia is a little further south in, in Africa. But in those days, it's that whole region of upper Egypt and uh, called Nubia or Abyssinia is another name we give to this area. But that's what the Bible's talking about when it talks about Ethiopia. And so this person, there's a great long history of, of Judaism from Ethiopia. Does anybody know some Old Testament connections? Where did Ethiopia get first find out about the God of the Bible? King Solomon? Yes. And someone in the first service mentioned Moses had a wife who was a Cushite, right? It was Cushite. So Cush is another name of this region. So uh, that probably explains why this Ethiopian, they had some connection with, the, with Old Testament times, with Judaism. So this Ethiopian is here worshiping in Jerusalem, and he actually has a scroll, which is another thing that he must have been pretty well-to-do, because people didn't, you know, normal people didn't carry around scrolls, and he had a scroll of Isaiah. But clearly, there's a big cultural gap between Philip and this black man from Africa who's a eunuch, and who's in a chariot. And God has a plan for this man. God notices people of other cultures who are different from us. We don't. We think, or we notice them and think, oh, there's a weird person. Or, oh, you know. We, we're afraid of those things. But God says, no, 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 no. I care about that person. I want you to reach out to that person. He cares about other races, people that we don't feel comfortable with, people we think are bad people. God cares about them, and he sends us to them. That's the book of Acts. That's the mission of the church. Be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's the ends of the earth. It's now happening so soon. And we're still in that time. So it's great that we have a, a map, that we, have, we think about mission. God has sent us to the mission. But what about right here in Abbotsford? Oh, we have cultural barriers here, amen? Yeah, we have groups around us. Well, those are different people. They talk a different language. They dress so different. But God says, no, go alongside. Get up next to them. And notice it's not complicated. He says to Philip, step by step. You know, first of all, Philip... Get on this road. All right, I'm on this road, and I'm walking, and I'm walking south. So all of a sudden, there's a chariot. Huh. 
Spirit says, go up close to that chariot. So he gets up closer and he hears the guy reading. Because in those days, they, people read aloud. So he hears the voice of the guy reading. And right away, he recognizes, oh, that's what's happening. That's why God put me on this crazy road to Gaza. That's why he told me to go up next to this chariot with this large black African man. I don't know if he was large. Sometimes we think all, you know, African people are large and tall and like basketball. That's, you know, what we have in our mind. But whatever, he's like, all right. That's why God has put me here. And he reaches out to him. So who are those people in your life? You know, we have, we have many, you know, Sikh people close to us. And I, you know, that, that can be a barrier. People look at the Sikhs and think, well, what kind of people are they? And he, Look at the men, and they look intimidating. You know, they just facial features or turbans. Or the, oh, do they have a dagger? And can I approach this person? But when the Holy Spirit nudges us, we got to take this next step. We got to get close, see, listen, explore. Philip did it. We can do it too. Pay attention to the nudging of the Spirit. Keep your eye out for the people that the Lord wants you to get close to. On a flight. Again, as I said, at your school, with a teammate on, your, on the team, the sports that you're playing, anywhere, ask questions, engage. And then look at how the power of the gospel transforms lives. Amazing. Of course, this has got to be low-hanging fruit. I mean, Isaiah 53, in all the Old Testament, what a, what, where could you pick a clearer chapter? And he picks the verses, and he's reading aloud. Philip hears him reading these verses about how the, the sheep led to slaughter and a lamb uh, is silent before the shears. And so for the Jews, they would read the prophet Isaiah. And even today, the, the, the connection that w- who Isaiah is talking about, because later on in Isaiah 53, we all, all re- also read that this suffering servant, uh, that he bore our transgressions, that he was punished for our iniquities. By his stripes, we are healed. So, but for, for Jews, the idea that this was Messiah is just, confusing to them Uh, because Messiah to the Jews is the savior, the victor that will help kill all the enemies and, and reunite Israel. So how can the Messiah be suffering? No, they, they understood perhaps that this was like a metonym, a a word substituting or a picture substituting another reality. And so maybe the suffering servant that Isaiah is talking about is really all of Israel. That's all of Israel. And they could identify with that because We've all suffered so much, and Israel suffers and suffers. So that's how they read it. But, but this Ethiopian, he's just asking the question. And so Philip says, oh, and, he, and on the scroll, he would have had the verses that talk about the substitutionary death of Christ, of the servant who bore our transgressions. So Philip takes him and says, I'll tell you who this is talking about. This isn't the people of Israel. This was fulfilled by Jesus, the Messiah. Oh, who is he? Oh, he lived, died, and was raised from the dead. And now forgiveness of sins and redemption is available to everyone, all of us through him. He explained the gospel to him. This was a perfect setup. But notice that Philip started where the Ethiopian was and from there, preach the gospel. That's what, exactly what it says. Verse 35, Philip began with that passage and told him the good news about Jesus. When you're in conversation with someone, begin where they are. Find out where they are. This summer, uh, Pastor Matthew at North Langley uh, has been preaching a series uh, with other guests and stuff on, uh, I can't remember what he called the series, but it was basically, they took a different uh, rock song uh, uh, every week. And we're talking about where is, uh, where is God, the God search in popular music. Uh, my daughter Erin preached one of the sermons, and she chose uh, music by someone I never heard of called Chance the Rapper. So she did rap music. I'm like, really, Erin, you're going to do rap music? Because in my mind, rap music, because I don't listen to it a lot, but it's just what I hear of it is just like, oh, well, that's that music that's full of obscenities and foul language. And she's like, Dad... <laughs> The most popular rapper right now is a guy named Chance the Rapper, and he's a young guy, and she said, he talks about God. Yes, he uses foul language, and yes, there's inappropriate things, but in the middle, and many of his songs are expressly talking about God and faith in God. 
And it's tremend- it opens tremendous opportunities for conversation because this is the music that, that, that our young generation is listening to. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Well, good on you. I don't know if I'm going to start listening, but, you know, that's awesome. So this is what Christians have always done. It's what the Apostle Paul did when he got to Athens. He mucked around the city, walked around and looked at everything and said, asked in his heart the question, what is God doing here? And then he found that idol that was to an unknown God. So he started talking to people where they were at. I want to talk to you about that idol that you have in the city over there to an unknown God. Why are you doing this? Why are you in this religion? What are you really after? What is your heart crying out for? So we start with people where they're at, but it begins with listening. And then we make our way to sharing the good news. We don't just stick around talking about God or religion or saying, well, that's nice for you. And we press in to share the good news. And that's what we're really asking the Holy Spirit. Lord, show me how I can share Jesus with people. This doesn't happen. Hey, this was low-hanging fruit. You've got to admit. I mean, this just unfolded and fell into place. And maybe some of your conversations take years. Some of you have been doing that. You've been working on a friendship for years, and it's slow. But it's the message of the gospel that transformed lives. There's an interesting thing about the baptisms. Of course, it's a very fast baptism, and Philip started getting a reputation for that. By the way, in chapter 21 of Acts, we find out from Philip that he's called the evangelist. Evangelists usually are, they like to see people come to Christ and get them baptized. And Philip did that. In Samaria, he baptized Simon the sorcerer. Later on, they found out that Simon was a little bit green, let's say, in his faith. And, uh, but Philip's like, hey, believer, get him baptized. And so he does with the, with the Ethiopian. That just tells us that, hey, in the New Testament times, people believed and were baptized. Totally. Uh, in the church today, we like, when people want to be baptized, we like to know that they understand what they're being baptized into. But this eunuch knew that. And by the way, he was on the way to Ethiopia, and they didn't have a chance to talk to him about church membership. Uh, so if you're ever meeting an Ethiopian on the way to eunuch, go, or <laughs> not on the way to eunuch, on the way to Ethiopia, uh, go ahead and baptize them, or whatever situation you're in. We're, we're not the baptism police as Christians. But when people are baptized, we want them to know what they're being baptized into, into Christ, and they're being baptized into the body of the Christ. By the way, if you're not baptized, that's, and you say you're a follower of Christ, then get baptized. Christians should be baptized. We should be filled with the Spirit, submitted to Christ, and baptized upon the confession of our faith. So they were baptized, or he was baptized. And that leads us to the final point, the power of simple obedience to Christ. This man went on his journey rejoicing. Philip never had a clue what happened in Ethiopia. But Ethiopia has been through history, a phenomenal country or responsiveness to the gospel. I don't know about all of its ancient history, uh, but the history of Christianity in Ethiopia uh, may be among the oldest uh, Christianity in the world. Uh, because this is very early in the book of Acts, and, and according to Irenaeus, uh, one of the church leaders from the second century, This eunuch went back to Ethiopia and evangelized his people. Another tradition has Matthew, the apostle, also going to that region and evangelizing. But for us in the Western church, we don't know much about it. But they have a long-standing tradition of Christianity. It's it's Orthodox. Coptic is where the the Ethiopians are affiliated with. Uh, Coptic churches, if you don't know anything about that. But you know the Coptic Pope who I met a couple of years ago in, uh, in Egypt, Theodorus. Uh, they have a big black donut that they wear on their head, which is very impressive. And, uh, but the Ethiopians are connected with the Coptic church. But listen, uh, for many years when I was pastoring in North Langley, I had a brother in the church named Howard Borlas, Howard and Ruth. Howard spent over 60 years in the Sudan, Ethiopia, and Somalia as a missionary with Sudan Interior Mission those days, now called Serving in Mission. I remember talking to Howard about the different people groups. And he said, Ethiopians are different. He said, there is a, there, the gospel takes root. And Sudan Interior Mission, when they went there in the 30s and 40s, planted a church. It's called the Word of Life Church. The Ethiopians called the Kalahuit Church. When communism came into Ethiopia in the 50s, all the missionaries were kicked out. And like China, the place went dark as far as communication. Nobody knew what was going on. A small church 
20 years later, 8 million believers in the Kalahiwa church, thousands of churches planted all over Ethiopia and Eritrea, sending out missionaries globally. Today, a thriving church, thriving Mennonite churches in Ethiopia. It's a powerful place. Not uh, Many problems, many challenges, but a people responsive to the gospel and leading in their mission focus in Africa. Philip never knew. He just led one person to the Lord. You don't know the impact your witness can have. When Luke wrote Acts, he wanted to send a message. Here's a big chunk of scripture. The previous verses, Philip is preaching to Samaria. Many people are being healed. and All kinds of things are happening. Many people come to Christ. Now, the same number of verses for one conversation. You don't know. King Road, you don't know as a church family. What? fruit will come from your faithful and simple obedience. But isn't it good to know that's not up to us? Ours is just to listen and obey. The Holy Spirit is in you. God has a heart for lost people all around you. So ask him to speak to you and guide you. Share the message of Jesus faithfully and see what amazing things God will do through your life. Let's pray together. Lord, we're so challenged. By this scripture, we're so blessed that you would use simple folk like us. Our lives aren't perfect, but your spirit has come into us. Give us grace to listen and use us for your glory in our world, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Rob, let's all stand for the last song.
soon.